All right, everybody. Let's, uh, time to hear some of the ideas from the group. My name is Marshall Woodruff. I'm with Brenton Security Services out of Southwest Missouri. Our group here, we decided that using CRM to track our leads and revenues uh, by source type uh, was probably one of the more beneficial ways um, on generating new leads and keeping track of leads and the effectiveness of each. Um, also selling our core values, uh, the process and the company, um, avoiding all bid work. <laughs> <laughs> and then on our, uh, and then like he started off with earlier on charging for design services, we do feel that this is something extremely beneficial um, for all companies to do. Um, once again, on that last topic there, to avoid the bid work and guarantee more profit for the company versus wasting a lot of time and effort. Good. All right. Peter Cook with Automation Design out of Michigan, and our table came up with a couple of uh, good suggestions. One is to find a niche and then duplicate or reach out to others similar. Uh, one of our uh, um, gentlemen here uses the Homeowners Association, and they did one, and then they are very competitive, and then they went to all the other homeowners associations and uh, sold those upgrade packages. Um, some other ones was giving American, American Express gift cards to referral partners or giving monitoring credits for a referral. Uh, another gentleman is using online reviews as part of their SEO and SMO. And then the last thing was just to understand uh, we're using 3% as a design fee, and that's something that they use on a lot of their different projects. Good. Good, Peter. <clears throat> All right. Over here. Hi, I'm Eric with Security Alarm. Um, our group selected uh, no proposals go out without reviewing first by a sales engineer or some type of uh, vetting process so we don't do un un work that we don't want. Um, concurring with the other one being more selective on the leads and uh, not going through all the bids, reviewing them before we go out um, and using social media a lot more. So that was a top three. Hi, uh, James Welsh. Um, it's, we went through a bunch of different things as it related to uh, identifying leads and sort of new business development opportunities. And, you know, I don't know if it's overwhelming, but uh, really what it seemed to boil down to from the group here is that, you know, exceptional customer service is really going to be the pivot to getting new leads. I and mean, that was going to be through solving a lot of pain points for your customers. Some of the gentlemen at this table are doing work for custom high-end homes where the property managers are responsible for a lot of the uh, maintenance of those systems. They're able to you know, bring them uh, fewer pain points and new ideas that help them to build on new business because now that property manager or owner's project manager or consultant will help to bring them new projects. I'm Matt Stites and I'm uh, from Houston, Texas with Bravis Houston. And here at our table here, uh, table number 12, we were talking about creative ways to generate new leads. Uh, a lot of us host mixers and gatherings and things like that, but that's what a lot of our competitors already do. And what we decided to do at, at our local branch in Houston is at CEDIA this past year, we sent two of our sales team members to actually become CEDIA outreach instructors. There's not a lot of our competition that's doing that. So we were actually able to go to our specifiers who wish to further their education and kind of draw them in that way. And um, rather than go about doing things that they're used to seeing all the time and going to these mixers, we can actually help them further their education and then kind of nurture those relationships that are growing. And we're offering something that most of our competitors aren't. So they're sending us a lot more clients that way. Hi, I'm Matt Boer with uh, Fisticom. And we identified two of the companies here do uh, annual tech expos where we bring in our, our vendor and our manufacturers. Um, but one of the things that we like to do is provide extra value by having some really interesting uh, Outbreak or sessions where people can come or having a keynote speaker that can bring some extra value to the program. And also, uh, when doing annual tech reviews with our clients, um, just, just reminding them or asking them for referrals at the end of those meetings because you're in front of these people and too often you forget to ask for a referral and that can really generate a lot of extra business for you. Uh, Chad Bowman, um, Rosen Electric. So 
Man, I got so many good things here. We had a good little table. Um, I'm going to talk about this because it's something probably a lot of people don't think about, um, packaging. So there's a lot of time involved in technicians taking cardboard boxes into a van, out of a van, into a house, out of a house, put it in the dumpster, winch, repeat, every day. What we started doing is remove all that stuff from the cardboard. Take your speakers out, take your grills, put them in a dedicated box, do something to protect your grills. Hey, let's take it a step further. Let's get a tool cart, place the speakers you need on that tool cart so the tech knows exactly what he needs. He's not installing the wrong product in the wrong room. Oh, let's take that a step further. Your control panel, your wall plate, whatever your trim devices are. Put that on a cart, package it with a room number or however you want to call it, the port cochere, the garage, theater, screening room, whatever name of the room fits your industry, put that on there, the technician just reels it in, stalls it, is done for the day. You're gonna save a ton of money. Great tip. Thank you. All right, next in the back. Yep. So we were talking about uh, schedule changes and working with, uh, trying to keep our technicians busy while schedules changes happen. Um, one of the ideas here was uh, reserving bandwidth here. Uh, for when you have these open things or uh, schedule shifts. Uh, have a backlog of things to do and have that built into your schedule so that if you had to take care of an emergency, you had that bandwidth in there, but otherwise you have that backlog of items ready to go, ready to process. Um, also, uh, partnering with uh, an IT company that's already working with a client when you're trying to do uh, something on their network or trying to remote in or do something, instead of reinventing the wheel, work with that client's IT partner already on site and you get a lot better results that way. Good stuff. All right. Right here, table 17, go. Hi, uh, Lionel Felix, Felix Media. Um, we were talking about establishing uh, pay and grading for different levels of techs. Uh, what I found uh, in where we work is that we've got techs that are up and down the, the pay grade and they know internally what each person's superpower is, but establishing a, a more of a, a matrix around what's a level one, what's a level two, what's a, a, a commissioning person. That's uh, something that we're definitely looking at, and we've all agreed internally that this is uh, a, a good strategy. And then um, establishing difficulty factors for different projects, so you can assign certain kinds of projects to certain PMs and certain uh, teams that are better at one thing. Maybe they're better at a difficult client, maybe they're better with new construction, maybe they're better with wood construction. So I know that we have on our team a number of people that have woodworking backgrounds and have other people on the team that have metal backgrounds. And just pairing them up based on not just the group that we've assigned them to, but pairing them up really well with the kinds of projects that make the most sense for those people. Great. All right. Good afternoon. Um, trying to answer the age-old question of uh, finding good technicians and good salespeople. Um, we uh, at United Alarm and Brookfield have had great success with bringing in people that were not necessarily from the industry. I think people often in this room will go out and try to find an individual with this certification or that certification or he's a specialist in this or, you know, he's the best of the best at that. But with that sometimes comes, you know, maybe 10 or 15 or 20 years of bad habits and you find yourself trying to break a lot of these bad habits rather than, um, you know, just start from scratch. So bringing in a person that's mechanically inclined, bringing in a person that comes to work every day, that has a good attitude and has the will to learn, you're f you'll actually find that you're trying to uh, acclimate that person to an environment that sometimes there's 20 or 30 people that know exactly what to do and they can teach and they can breed that person and uh, we've had very, very good success at that. So uh, that might be something that you know, people want to consider. We've talked about um, scheduling and having PMs do it themselves requires some heavy communication and you know, almost daily, weekly is just not good enough. Um, and as far as tracking technicians go, um, a decent amount of us are using Verizon Connect. 
um, tracks productivity and how long they're on a job site, billing, et cetera. Great. Thank you. Table 40 here. Um, we use a lot of tools for project management, um, tracking the technician schedules, um, whereabouts, uh, field to office communications. So we're using a lot of like productivity tools and management tools. Uh, and then as far as uh, people are concerned, training, um, it's really just uh, creating a good culture for the people that work for us. Um, we also kind of flushed out that um, we hire people that fit our corporate environment or our culture uh, as opposed to maybe finding someone that's got 15 years of experience or the right certifications. It's more about maybe having someone that fits uh, the culture of our corporation and, um, you know, the way our customers work. That, works for us. <laughs> All right, we had, uh, specifically with selling service contracts, um, the good ideas were every proposal should have um, a good, better, best, or some form of automatic inclusion in proposals. That's a good way to uh, increase your service sales. And then another idea was uh, bundling maintenance in your proposal with an auto renewal and having them pay, considering the option of having them pay uh, maybe for the first two years all at once. And uh, I don't know, uh, you would show it in such a way that they got used to seeing that happening. They used that service over the first couple of years. Hi, I'm Paul from uh, South Florida. Uh, one of our guys here is doing a lot of work using software to be able to communicate out to their clients. If they've come online and they've looked at a proposal that maybe they sent out a year ago or two years ago, it'll notify their sales team. and It'll make them aware of the fact that they're actually looking at these new proposals or older proposals and some of the stuff that they didn't option for. In addition to that, they also incentivize their technicians to uh, sell to the clients and upsell the clients while they're out there and it seems to be very successful for them. So utilizing the technology to be able to get the communication out and then utilizing your text to make sure that they're incentivized to be able to upsell for some of those uh, increases. Julia Walsh from One Vision Resources, here to talk about service. Um, the one thing, or one of the ones that we talked about is making these service contracts a requirement and talking to your salespeople about it and truly making them understand that it's not an option for a client to say no because if the salesperson feels like there's an avenue where they don't have to talk about something, they will take that avenue. And then structuring the service agreements in a way that would satisfy multiple types of personalities and. Uh, various needs so that you can say, yes, this is a requirement, but we have options. Where do you fit in this world? Hi, uh, John Ecker from New York City, Peace of Mind Technologies. Our table talked about uh, technology that allows you to monitor the different devices uh, remotely at the location and uh, the client could have an app, your service department could have apps that will allow you to reboot remotely and being able to pay monthly or charge monthly for those different uh, services and, and price it in different ways. Either some people price it one fee, no matter how many uh, devices you have. Others were charging uh, per room that they have the devices in. Um, another thing we talked about was actually branding your servicing department, uh, whatever that program is, coming up with a name and having an offering of everything that include, that's included and getting your sales team wrapped around uh, those features that the, that the organization provides. Hi, I'm Darren Tizano, ABJV out of Houston, Texas. Um, we talked a lot on, at our table about how to sell managed services, right? And the biggest thing that we came up with is how do you break down the walls? Make it easy for the customers, and that's not putting a price on it. Yes, sounds crazy, it works. Take the price off of it and change your model to an on-demand service, right? Call me when you need me. I have the contract which forces you or creates the need for you to do business with me, and that puts you, you know, in the front line for the customer to call you for any needs that you may need under managed services. So a trick to everybody is take the price tag off of it. 
Make it on demand. Call me when you need me. Here's a negotiated price for that service. Great. One more. Anybody? All right, I got one more. I'm going to take the challenge of uh, there was no good security guys in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so before everybody throws their water bottle at me, um, back to service contracts and the ability to sell them and, and close them and make money on them. Um, one thing we've had great success with over the course of 23 years is incentivizing the salesperson to sell service contracts and, ready? let them share in the residual. The alarm industry knows a little bit about residual. Um, it's one thing that I think we've done a fantastic job with. But I have salespeople and I have technicians that have been with me for years and years and years and quite honestly can't leave me. They just wouldn't even think about it because their residual has grown through the years exponentially to the point where you're just not going to go make that money somewhere else. So share the wealth with your people and, and, and show them, hey, listen, this is how we started in the business. This is what we do. And, you know, focus on that for yourself. Mm -hmm.